Hey buddies, Mr. Pugly here, coming out for another Elden Ring video. Today I want to talk about the worst to best boss weapons in the game right now. So there's a total of 17 total boss weapons currently that you can get in the game. And we're going to be ranking every single one to see which one is truly best and which one is truly the worst. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch on the top right. You have no idea how much helps me out. And let's get into the video. Legendary? Whoa! No way, dude. First things first, let's talk about the Axe of Godfrey. Unfortunately, the Axe of Godfrey is going to be the first entry on the list, which means it's going to be the worst. The reason for that is because it has weird scaling that basically puts it into the qualification of a quality build. Now, normally that means that it uses strength and dex scaling that are pretty much around even playing fields that makes it into a bizarre mix that requires you to build both to fully optimize it. It's a colossal weapon, which means it has a long width, which is excellent, but the main reason why it's not as good as other colossal weapons is due to the fact of its art of war that isn't really that useful. It has a very long wind up time that does a quite a big area of effect but it's very easy to punish and you can very easily get out of dodge if you're doing PvP to dodge out of the way of the attack. The only thing that's interesting about this weapon is the fact that it has a unique heavy attack animation. After you activate the Art of War, you will have a new heavy attack that puts a stomp on the ground, which is very cool, and then swings the blade really fast. You can do a combo string that ends it into an attack like that. But if you were to hold the second attack, you will notice that you will go across the ground charge up forward and hit into the enemy but it moves so slow it's almost never worth it to use which makes it one of the worst weapons on the list unfortunately which is quite the shame because godfrey is such an awesome character in the lore the next weapon on the list is going to be the winged great horn the winged great horn honestly isn't that bad of a weapon but if you compare it to other great axes in the game there's no reason to choose this one over others the only thing going for this weapon is its art of war which allows you to apply a debuff to to the enemy's defense which is i believe 15 percent off of their defense which allows you to deal some extra damage but the main utility i like to use it for is to activate it and then swap over to a weapon that's better at dealing damage because this one doesn't really deal that much damage as you can see right there we were able to activate the debuff and the enemy wasn't actually able to target us that's because this animation is completely silent which means you can very easily sneak up on an enemy apply the debuff and start dealing good damage with some better weapons in your inventory it's just because of that nice little utility of the debuff it goes a little bit higher than the axe of godfrey now the next item is going to be the bastard star now the reason why the bastard star is this low on the list is due to the fact that its art of war has such an incredibly long wind up time that most of the time you're going to get hit yourself before you actually hit the enemy and most of the time you'll notice after you activate it despite it looking super duper cool it won't actually hit the target 100% of the time. So I can see here, here's an enemy right here. I'm going to activate the Art of War. It's going to proc, and then it's going to take a couple moments before it actually hits with the follow-up attack. There's another weapon that is able to use a similar Art of War that it's basically just goes right in front of you. That's really quick, but the name of that weapon eludes me at the current moment, but it's a much better variant of this weapon. The only thing that I like about this weapon is that if you listen really closely, you can kind of hear like shimmering and shinings and stuff like that, which is cool aesthetically, but you know, <laughs> the weapon isn't really that great. So unfortunately it really falls flat because of that. And naturally, since it's a flail, it doesn't have a long reach. So unfortunately you do need to get pretty close to the targets and the amount of damage you can deal normally with just regular attacks is very, very low. Even when I'm stacking a bunch of intelligence, which this item is supposed to scale with pretty decently. Now, the next item we're gonna be talking about is the ax of Godric. Now, the reason why this item item is better than the other axe is due to the fact that it has a way better art of war and it swings a lot faster which is always nice it basically gets the reach of the other axe but with a faster attack animation and it seems to be able to deal better damage overall it is still one of the worst boss weapons on the list so keep that in mind we're not going to see anything incredible. The nice thing about this weapon, as I said before, is the Art of War that allows you to produce quite a large AoE effect with three additional shockwaves. You're actually able to animation cancel this pretty easily with a dodge roll mid animation, so keep that in mind when you're using this ability. Unfortunately, if you're facing an enemy in PvP and they have good poise, they can actually go past this shockwave and deal damage to you, easily staggering you, which is a bit unfortunate. But it does a decent AoE, as I'll show in a few moments here, that allows you to clear lots of enemies pretty quickly 
as you see right here, I'm not even, this item isn't even buffed at all and we we're able to clear those targets pretty quickly. But you know, these aren't necessarily hard enemies, so that's not necessarily that impressive. The next item we're gonna be talking about is the Giant's Red Braid. The nice thing about this weapon is the fact that it is a whip which allows you to deal decent damage to targets from afar without getting too, too close. But the range, <laughs> I feel like, with all whips in the game could be a little bit farther in my opinion. The one thing I really love about this weapon is its incredible unique skill, Flame Dance, which does this incredible looking attack that is just so stylish and allows you to clear lots of enemies around you with a decently big AoE. I think this is one of my favorites unique skills in the game. It's just so stylish. It just, I wish it dealt more damage. The Art of War obviously deals fire, but unfortunately there's a lot better whips in the game that you could be using as opposed to this weapon. So it doesn't really perform that well, unfortunately. Now this is one of the only whips that actually scales with faith. So if you're doing a faith based build, you could potentially deal some damage by dumping a bunch of points into faith but even with a build that has a decent amount of faith, it doesn't deal that much damage, unfortunately. The next weapon is going to be another weapon that scales with faith. It's going to be the Grafted Dragon Fist. Now the Grafted Dragon Fist is obviously a fist weapon, which means you can attack really, really fast, but it doesn't have a large amount of range, which is a bit unfortunate. Nice thing about this weapon is going to be the Art of War, which allows you to do this awesome looking attack, which spreads pools of fire around the area. Now this will slowly tick away at an enemy's HP if they're standing in it, but because of the the unpredictable nature of the projectiles, you won't have a reliable chance of getting the projectiles to actually hit your target, which means that it doesn't really benefit you when fighting smaller enemies. But if you're fighting a giant, you can actually get these lava pools to hit the enemy really easily. Now the fire that it spews out doesn't really deal that much damage, but the initial hit does deal a decent amount of damage as you'll see right here. So that was an easy 571. And as you can see right here, every time the fire ticks at the giant it's around 15 damage which isn't that much granted this item isn't really all the way buffed but its attack animation with the art of war is pretty quick which allows you to get a big burst of damage pretty quickly if you can get up close and personal to the target. And if the targets are close enough, you can actually hit multiple targets with the initial hit, which is excellent. Now, the next item is going to be the Lion's Great Bow. Now, the Lion's Great Bow is actually a pretty good Great Bow, all things considered, because there's, I believe, only like four or five Great Bows in the game, which means there isn't much competition, but it is considered one of the better Great Bows in the game besides the Golem's Great Bow. Since it is a Great Bow, it has a pretty slow attack animation which is you know to be expected from any great bow in the game but the unique part about this great bow is it comes with a unique art of war that is basically art of war you can put on most bows rain of arrows which pretty much what it does is you go onto the floor you activate it and then it's going to do a rain of arrows around you or if you're targeting an enemy it's going to do a rain of arrows at the actual target now this does incredible damage to larger targets as i'll show in a few moments which means that it's able to clear larger enemies really really quickly you might have even seen some videos going across reddit or youtube of people using this bow to kill the elden beast very very easily so i'm just going to use the rain of arrows on this giant and you'll You'll see it's able to deal a decent bit of damage now keep in mind i'm not specced at all for bows and 487 damage is nothing to scoff at so that was a decent showing on what i meant where bigger targets takes large amounts of damage because they're going to connect with most of the arrows now the other unique effect of the lion's great bow is the fact that it has a unique interaction with the radon spears now you can use the radon spears to have gravity arrows that pretty much just increase your damage by 20 percent it doesn't really do anything special unfortunately but it it does increase your damage by a little bit, which is always nice to see. If you're in PvP and you're expecting someone to get up close and personal while using this bow, you can actually use the Reina Arrows to surround yourself to deal some unexpected damage to the enemy that gets real close because it has a decent stagger chance. So if someone's about to rush you, you activate it, they think it's going to go to where they are. Nope, it's going to go right to where you are, which is going to surprise them and potentially stagger them. Now, next item is going to be the Dragon King's Crag Blade. Now, the Dragon King's Crag Blade is actually one of the better new weapon types that was introduced into Elden Ring, which is Heavy Thrusting Sword. It has a long reach with a decent amount of damage with not too much wind up with its regular strings of attacks, which is awesome. I personally am a big fan of poking weapons, so rapiers and these type of weapons are all the type of weapons I like to use normally when playing Elden Ring. It also comes with a pretty decent Art of War that allows you to travel 
decent distance with a nice little shockwave attack at the very end. Now, while you're traveling in this form, you're actually going to be dealing continuous damage as long as the cloud is connecting with targets. As you can see right here, I can pass through these crowd of people very easily while dealing a decent amount of damage, but most of the damage is going to lie at the very end of the combo, which is where the big thrust attack happens. Because it attacks so rapidly, you can actually stagger enemies pretty easily, as I'll show in just a few moments here. Now, the Art of War can be used to close the gap between the enemies, but normally I like to use it right up against a enemy like this to easily stagger it. So I'm going to hit it a couple of times and then the final hit is going to stagger it if I were to hit properly. So let me try that one more time. So I'm going to activate it and I'm going to occasionally hit the enemy and then at the final hit you'll notice that I staggered. I actually staggered the target before the final hit happened and that's because we're hitting so many times during the thunder cloud form which is awesome. During the form you do get a little bit of super armor which is awesome. I don't have like any poise on this build which means that you can easily get a couple of free hits against your target even if they're trying to hit you which is always excellent. Now you can actually cancel the animation early as I just showed right there, which allows you to immediately plunge into the enemy right away, which is very beneficial because sometimes I'll use it and accidentally go past the enemy as you saw right there. Now, if you're playing PVP with this weapon, your enemy could potentially see it coming. Since it travels decently fast, you should be able to catch up to the target almost half the time unless they use a smart dodge rule to get in vulnerability. Now, the next item is going to be Merica's Hammer, which basically has all the benefits of the last weapon, but more with a nice little AOE. So the Art War is also going to lift you up from the ground and then do a smashing form, but also deal a huge AOE, which allows you to clear a decent groups of targets. Now I believe this Art of War was buffed because this Art of War was a lot slower and now it's a lot faster which allows you to potentially get your target hit quicker in PvP or just potentially get it out before you actually get hit because you can actually get hit out of the animation which kind of sucks. Now since you're up in the air for a little bit and you track the foe you could potentially actually hit the enemy behind their shield which allows you to actually hit the enemy even if they're guarding which is <laughs> really ridiculous and the actual Art of War does large amounts of damage. I'm not even upgraded at all with this weapon and we're dealing around 595 right there and earlier I think we saw 708 we got 708 right there again so <laughs> one of the cooler art of wars in the game in my opinion and rightfully so since it comes from such a high level boss now the next item is going to be Morgoth's curse sword now the Morgoth curse sword is a dex weapon that allows you to deal some easy bleed because it has bleed buildup it is a curved great sword which means it has the standard curved great sword attack animation which has decent reach and actually pretty decently fast strings for a great sword. Now what makes this sword unique is going to be the Art of War which does a incredible looking fire slash that explodes after a few moments. I believe this Art of War was also buffed to swing a lot faster which means you're going to be able to connect easily with this Art of War when you weren't able to before. It has a decent lunge after you activate it which means you can close the distance between your target and you easily allowing you to hit your target with the actual Art of War. It doesn't deal an incredible amount of damage but it builds a bleed which allows you to cheese some damage as everyone everyone knows in the community where bleed is often considered very OP. The next item is going to be the Regal Scepter. Now the Regal Scepter is one of the only staffs that is able to actually boost full moon sorcery, which only has really two spells unfortunately, but each spell is able to deal a large amount of damage. Now this item is often referred to being as one of the best staffs in the entire game, just because if it's a unique spinning weapon art of war that is able to deal large amounts of damage. Now this art of war you can walk around very slowly with which allows you to catch targets that are dodging slow or moving slow but it deals an incredible amount of damage as I'll show in a few moments. Unfortunately it does require you to have 60 int which means you have to be pretty stacked into intellect to even wield this weapon but once you stack enough intellect you're able to deal some pretty busted damage. It's one of the few scepters in the game that is able to out DPS the Academy's Glintstone Staff, which is pretty incredible because usually you equip that for the majority of the game, but you can easily clear targets like this giant in just a couple hits with the spinning weapon. As you can saw right there, we're dealing around 700 total damage with each little swing, which is a stupid amount of damage from a intellect based item. 
to do close range. Because of the fact this is a scepter, most people will expect you to cast magic with it, but if they get up close and personal, you can actually start spinning the weapon and slowly go towards them, which will catch them off guard and often result in an easy PvP kill. Now, the next item on the list is going to be another Colossal Sword by the name of the Black Blade. Now, the Black Blade is one of the few weapons that has very interesting lore implications due to the fact that it has the Art of War by the name of Destined Death. Lore nerds will know that Destined Death refers to a certain thing in the lore that is one of the more interesting topics to learn about. You should definitely look it up if you can on Google because it is a very interesting read. Now this Art of War is going to have three hitboxes, the initial hit, the slam, and then the myriad of blades that spawn afterwards, which is very cool. Now when you hit someone with this Art of War, it's going to apply two different debuffs. It's going to apply the debuff as you saw right there that slowly ticks away at the target, but also permanently reduces the max HP of the target that you're hitting by 15%, which is very, very useful. Especially useful on PVPers that use a lot of heals, which allows you to get them closer to death more quickly with fewer swings because, you know, they can't heal all the way. Now, because of the fact that it has multiple different hitboxes, you can cheese damage very easily with this effect, allowing you to easily apply the debuff to targets and sometimes just randomly hit your target when they're not expecting it because it has so many different hitboxes when you activate the skill. And once again, since it's a colossal weapon, it has nice reach, nice strings without sacrificing too much speed and as well, a ton of damage. It does scale with faith so if you're doing a faith hybrid build you can actually boost up the damage a little bit better by going into faith now next item we're going to be talking about is going to be the starred scourge great sword which i often just call the radon's great sword this item comes with a unique two-handed style which when you equip it two hands it actually equips it into both hand slots which is very very cool now since it's a great sword it does have a slow nature to them but it has a unique style of attacks as you see right here and the string are actually pretty decently easy to connect due to the fact that they have such a large reach. It also comes with the Star Color Cry, which comes with an amazing AoE that deals lots and lots of damage, but also sucks in targets, allowing you to deal large amounts of damage to multiple targets really quickly. As you can see right here, here's the enemy. I'm going to suck him in, and then it has a follow-up if you continue to press it that deals large amounts of damage right there. If you don't put any additional inputs in it, it's only going to do the sucking effects. So if you successfully hit with the second effect make sure to do the follow-up to deal the large amounts of damage because the second effect doesn't deal much of any damage it's going to be primarily the slam damage that deals lots of damage now this art of war has lots of application that people use to farm ruins as you can see right here here's a big group of enemies and i'm going to be able to clear them pretty quickly without upgrading this weapon at all now if i were to upgrade this weapon it, it would be able to deal even better damage as you said right there but we are able to clear the entirety of the group except for one little target with just one one art of war which is awesome for farming ruins if you go to certain areas in the game its ruin farm application allows it to be placed this high on the tier list but it also allows you to look like a complete badass while also cosplaying as radon himself which is awesome now next item we're going to be talking about is the great sword sacred relic sword now the sacred relic sword is one of the cooler looking swords in the game and it has a nice little glow since it is a smaller great sword it is able to connect its swings a lot faster due to the fact that it has a faster attack animation the one thing that makes this sword shine is the fact that it has this incredible art of war by the name of wave of gold so when you activate it it's going to create this ginormous area effect that is often used in the game to farm targets in certain spots and the fact that the aoe also deals a decent bit of damage as you see right here with a couple of art of wars we should be able to clear this crowd in no problem without getting too too close because of the fact of it traveling so far which is incredible but just e three art of wars and me not upgrading this weapon at all we're able to clear this entire crowd which is incredible <laughs> most of the time people really just use this to farm ruins but you are able to easily hit lots of targets and a single target from really far away since it has such a huge arch once again this weapon scales into faith dex and strength so if you're doing a faith hybrid build you're able to deal a decent bit of damage with this weapon as well now the next item is going to be a katana by the name of the hand of melina now the hand of melina is a dex katana like most katanas it scales with dex but it also allows you to proc blood loss which is ridiculously overpowered in this game it is one of the few katanas that doesn't actually come with a sheath which is really nice for elden bling this weapon is really incredible looking and it comes with one of the coolest looking art of wars in the entire game if you keep on pressing the art of war button you'll continuously attack with light attacks that is able to continuously stagger enemies very 
very, very easily. Now, unfortunately, despite it looking like it attacks a lot, it does apply a lot of hits, but each one of these hits doesn't apply a large amount of blood loss, which is a bit unfortunate. You're going to see most of your blood loss actually build up when you swing the katana normally, which is to be expected, I suppose. It has large amounts of deck scaling, like most katanas, which allows you to deal large amounts of damage if you, of course, do a dex based build. And it also doesn't make you feel bad by using River of Blood. Now, the Waterfall Dance is able to deal large amounts of AoEs, as you guys saw before, but I'm going to kill this giant in just a couple hits with this Art of War, which is incredible. It does have a small little wind up, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is kind of negligible because of the fact that you're going to be hitting so, so quickly. So if you time it correctly, you're going to be able to obliterate your opponent very easily. And during the animation, even with a tiny bit of poise, you're going to be able to ignore some enemy hits. But if you'd like, you can actually stack a large amount of poise to make this animation to go through all the way without worrying about enemies interrupting it. It also kind of makes you feel like you're playing as one of the hardest bosses in the game, which is always a treat. Now, the next item on the list is going to be the second best weapon on the list. <laughs> We're almost done with the list. We have the Blastmith's Blade. This gross looking weapon is able to deal a large amount of damage while also having a nifty lifesteal effect. Upon defeating a target, you're going to see a 4% max HP healed with a plus 40 HP restored to your character. Now this is another great sword which means it's going to deal nice amounts of damage with fast little strings and naturally since it's a great sword it deals a lot of damage like most of the other great swords in the game. Now the Art of War is going to actually heal you differently than normally defeating the enemies. It's going to heal you 10% of your max HP as well as a flat 150 HP as well. So if I were to fire it into this group of targets you're going to notice my HP is going to restore slowly and you saw right there we're able to instantly kill these targets with 1300 damage without upgrading the weapon at all if this weapon was upgraded to plus 10 that would deal some even more damage which is incredible to think about the life steal property allows you to obviously heal yourself which allows you to have more uses of your sippy cup which is always nice because you want to have as many uses of this cup during a battle because it is one of the fastest healing items in the entire game making it invaluable to use on most any player's loadout and then finally the best boss weapon is going to be mogwin's sacred spear now mogwin's sacred spear is a really really busted weapon that is able to deal large amounts of damage once again this is one of those piercing weapons i like to use because i'm a big fan of just thrusting weapons but the main shiner of this particular item is the art of war which is able to hit enemies through the wall apply blood loss and have have a huge hitbox so if I were to proc this it's going to have three hits in total and this is going to potentially make your enemy get blood loss and then it applies a nice little buff to your weapon as well which basically means it has every single thing to obliterate your target it's going to buff your weapon if the art of war didn't hit it's going to hit through walls it's going to just be stupidly strong against any foe that you use it on and since it has such a large aoe you're able to clear large amounts of targets really really easily with this this is often considered to be one of the most busted weapons in the entire game and it is considered to be one of the best arcane weapons in the game so if you're doing an arcane base build make sure to use this weapon because it does so much damage just to show its ability of being able to hit shoot walls, I'm going to hide behind this statue and then all the enemies in front of the statue are going to get blood loss as you saw right there and die pretty quickly. So I'm just going to be able to spam this behind this pillar and kill the giant and all the enemies around <laughs> with the huge hitbox, which is ridiculous. And it's also able to stagger enemies as you can see right there. It's just all around a busted weapon, one of the best weapons you can get in the entire game. So as soon as you clear the boss, it drops its remembrance, make sure to get it ASAP because it is just so stupid how busted it is. And as always, a big shout out to the members who make these videos possible. We got Jason Rose, Clairvoyance, Rick and Glacius, Josh Dig, 31Bar70, Grey Wolf, Wishkeeper, Leshka, and Cameron. These are the people who support me as little as $5 a month on Patreon or as a YouTube member. And you can also support me as little as $5 a month by clicking the link in the comments or description or in the top right to become a member. The more members we have the closer i get to becoming full-time which means more videos for you guys and as always don't forget to like comment subscribe and i hope you all have a great day <laughs> bye bye and the last shall be first to immerse in a pass out heat facing the mud with a moxie melt till he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell war in a cave with a torch on a wall then a window arrangement of porcelain dolls